In this video, we're going to look at some analysis of functions using our derivative uh, techniques. And we're going to look at using the first derivative to determine if the function is increasing or decreasing and if the sec let the second derivative help us determine the concavity of a function. We're going to kind of work our way um, through this a little slowly. All right, so we'll start with looking at the graph. All right, and I want to identify graphically where the function is increasing. And if I look, the function here is going to be increasing for all values uh, to the right of x equals 5. And so what interval is the function in increasing? It's going to be uh, x is greater than 5. Now, what is the value of the derivative there? Now, the derivative indicates the slope of a curve. And so where a function is increasing, it will have positive slope, which tells us that the derivative is greater than zero. And so the value of the derivative here is when we're increasing, the derivative is going to be greater than zero. What interval is the function decreasing? Let me change colors here. So we're decreasing when we have negative slope. That's going to be the x values less than 3. And the value of the derivative there, well, we're talking about the first derivative. Since the first derivative tells me the slope of the curve, and if I'm decreasing, I have negative slope. The first derivative will be negative or less than 0. And where is the function constant? Well, we're constant from 3 to 5. And so from 3 less than x less than 5. Or we could write that in interval notation. What's the value of the derivative there? Well, if you're constant, the derivative is equal to 0. And so we can get this information by using our derivative techniques and finding the first derivative of a function and determining the sign of the first derivative will help us uh, determine where the function is increasing or decreasing at. And this takes us to the first derivative test where we can test for where we're increasing or decreasing. So if we have a function that is continuous on a closed interval from A to B and it's differentiable for all x values on the open interval from A to B, if my de first derivative is greater than 0, I will be increasing. If my first derivative is less than 0 for all x in that interval, we're going to be decreasing. And if the derivative equals 0 for all x within a certain interval, we're going to be constant. That's the information we can get from our first derivative. Now, the process in doing this is you're going to take your first derivative, and then you're going to find the critical numbers, which are the values that make the first derivative equal to 0 or undefined. And then we're going to do a sign chart to figure out where the first derivative is positive, negative, or equal to 0. Now, we can also use the uh, first derivative test to determine our relative extrema. And the way we can do that is if we look at a curve, and so right here on the left-hand side, I have a curve that has a relative maximum here at the uh, x-axis. And at that point here, we have... So I'm going to say at 0, because that's what the x value is. The derivative is equal to 0 there, because we have a horizontal tangent. And if I look at the diff what happens with my derivative, to the left side of 0, we go from increasing, so my first derivative is positive, to decreasing, where my first derivative is negative. And we have a sign change at x equals 0. That makes it be a relative maximum. And likewise, we'll have the same thing occur where we have a relative minimum. So at a relative minimum, I'm looking here at x is 0. So sign of my first derivative. My first derivative is equal to 0. We go from decreasing to the left side of 0 to increasing to the right side of 0. And so we have a sign change there. That's indicative of having a relative minimum. All right, so now we're going to use the first derivative to find our intervals of increasing or decreasing in any kind of relative extrema. Now, we're not looking for global or absolute maxism or minimums here. We're looking for relative extrema, or the turning points of the graph. So, and we're just looking for the x values. So I'm going to find my derivative of f. 
And then we need to find the zeros and where the derivative doesn't exist. Well, the first derivative here is continuous for the set of all real numbers. So well, I'm basically, I don't have anywhere where the derivative is not going to exist at. So I'm going to set it equal to zero and try to solve from there. And so what you have to do, you wind up factoring your first derivative, and we find our zeros to be negative 1 half and 3. And so the way we're going to proceed from here is we're going to make a sign chart for our first derivative. So I have my first derivative, and we're going to put our zeros, or our critical numbers, on this sign chart. So I have negative 1 half, and I have 3. And I like to, when I do this, I like to make a note here as to what the value is there. So first derivative equals zero at those two points. Now, to do my sign chart, what I have to do is I gotta pick numbers for x to plug into my first derivative around these two numbers here. And what I like to do is I like to put it in factored form because it makes it a lot easier to determine what your uh, sign's gonna be. So we'll start with, we'll pick a number to the left of negative one half to put in. And so let's pick an easier one. We're going to pick negative 1. And so I want to know what the signs are if I put negative 1 in. Well, I have 6. 6 is always positive. So put negative 1 here for x. 2 times negative 1 plus a 1 is a negative. And then put negative 1 in for x right here. Negative 1 minus 3 is a negative. Two negatives multiply together to make a positive. Then we go into the next interval. So we pick a number between negative 1 half and 3. So let's let x equal 0. Go put x is 0 in the same place. I put in 0 for the x. I get 1. That's positive. Times. Put in 0 for this x. 0 minus 3 is a negative. Positive times a negative makes a negative sign. And then we're going to put in a number to the right of 3. So let's pick an easy one. Let's go with 4. And we do the same thing again. 2 times 4 plus 1 is positive. And then we have uh, 4 minus 3 is positive. Positive times a positive is positive. All right, so we can use this sign chart to find the intervals where we're going to be increasing or decreasing. So, and we have to justify our statement here for the reason why. So f is going to be increasing where the first derivative is greater than zero. So my intervals for that are going to be from negative infinity to negative one-half, non-inclusive. And then we go from three to infinity. And f is going to be decreasing where the derivative is less than zero. So f is going to be decreasing where I have the negative sign on my sign chart, so from negative 1 half to 3. Now we can also determine our relative extrema here. So we're going to have, we're looking at the change in our signs uh, in our derivative. Those are going to be indicative of turning points. So if I look here at negative 1 half, my, I go from increasing to decreasing which means that my function went from increasing to decreasing at that point, which means we have a max. And at negative, or excuse me, at three, we go from decreasing to increasing, which means we have a minimum there. So we're just going to make that statement, and we're going to justify our reasoning. So we have a relative max at x is equal to negative one-half because... And then we'll say what happens with our first derivative. So f prime changes from positive to negative at that point. And then we make the same justification for the minimum. So we have a relative minimum at x equals 3 because the derivative changes its sign from negative to positive. Okay, we have the same thing here. We want to find the intervals of increasing or decreasing in any kind of relative extrema we may or may not have. So we got to find our first derivative. And it's often helpful when you find this derivative to simplify it, especially if you have negative exponents. So that way we can figure out where a derivative exists and where the derivative will equal um, zero at. So looking at this first derivative, 
we, our critical numbers are going to be what makes it equal zero and what makes that derivative undefined. Well, we, f prime of x equals zero at x equals zero, and it's undefined at what makes the denominator equal zero, which is gonna be x is equal to positive or negative three. So we have three critical values to test around. So we're gonna do our little sign chart again. And so I'm gonna do it right here. So this would be the sign chart for f prime. And we're gonna put our numbers on here. So negative three, zero, positive three. And we need to indicate what is going on for our derivative, just for our reference. So our derivative equals zero at zero, and our derivative is undefined at those two points, negative, when x is negative three and x is positive three. All right, so we're gonna do our sign chart here for our first derivative. We're gonna pick a number smaller, negative three. Let's go with negative four. Put negative four in for the x, my numerator's negative. Put negative four in for x, my denominator, 16 minus nine is positive. Negative divided by a positive makes a negative. Put in a number between negative three and zero. We'll go with negative one. Put negative one in for x, negative top, negative numerator, negative denominator, so two negatives dividing make a positive. Then we go between zero and three, let's test positive one, positive numerator, negative denominator. That makes a negative. And then pick out a number bigger than three, let's go with four. Put four in, positive numerator, positive denominator, that makes a positive result with division. So. We're ready to make our statements here. And so what we have, all right, let's do a start with our intervals of increasing and decreasing. So f of x is going to be increasing where the sign of my derivative is greater than zero. Well, that's gonna happen from negative three to zero, and it's gonna happen to the right of three, so three to infinity. f is going to be decreasing where my first derivative sign is negative, over that entire interval, so we're gonna be negative, from, or decreasing from negative infinity to negative three, and we're also decreasing from zero to three. Now we wanna look for our relative extrema. And so we look at our sign chart. Now here's the thing about f. f is continuous for all real numbers. So I don't have any asymptotes that I have to worry about and then exclude some of these critical numbers for, uh, as turning points because they may be asymptotes as we don't have that case here. So when I'm looking at negative three, we go from a negative first derivative to a positive first derivative. So I go from decreasing to increasing at that point, which means that we have a minimum. At zero, we go from positive first derivative to negative first derivative. So we go from increasing to decreasing, that means it's gonna have a maximum. And at three, we go from negative first derivative to positive first derivative, which means we go from decreasing to increasing, we have a minimum. So we're gonna identify a relative extrema, and we're going to justify what we have. And so we have a relative minimum, and we're justifying here as well. We have relative minimums at x equals positive or negative three because the sign of my first derivative changes from negative to positive at both of those x values. And we have a relative maximum at x is equal to zero because our first derivative changes signs from positive to negative.